Welcome back to another Construct video and in this video we're going to be looking at rain and thunder effects for your game. Let's get started. So let's start with lightning first because actually it's a really easy effect to implement. So first thing we need to do is insert a new object and just scroll down and grab a sprite and we're going to call this lightning. Click anywhere and we want quite a dark blue to give sort of a blue lightning effect but any colour can work and you can play around with this once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to place that in as a block colour and just press the big X and more importantly I need this to cover my entire level. So move it out just like that. You might want to do this on a separate layer if you're using a premium version. If you're using a free version I'll show you a way so this doesn't get in your way. Next thing we want to do is drop the opacity. I recommend about 80%. Again, you still can't see your level at this point, so there's still some work we need to do. And the way we're going to do that is just add an effect. So we're going to go down to the effects panel, add an effect, new effect. And we're looking for the dodge effect. This is going to blend in with the background, so it's taking that blue color, blend it with the background, and you get something sort of in between. Once we put that in, you can see that we can now see our level. And if we play this, you've got a sort of small blue tinge to the level. What we want to do is basically turn that blue tinge off when the lightning strikes and do it in a bit of a pattern as well. So that's our first step of the lightning. Let's go to our event sheet and let's look at the second step. Next we're going to add an event onto our system and we'll just go right to the bottom to this every x seconds. We're going to set up a random amount of time for the lightning to strike. I'm going to set this up between 3 and 5 seconds for this video. But what I really recommend is something longer, maybe 5 to 15 seconds, so your effect doesn't get too annoying. Depends what atmosphere you're going for. Once you've set that up, we're just going to add an action. We're going to go to lightning, and we're going to repeat basically the same two steps over and over again. The first one is going to be set visible, and we're going to start by making it invisible. You can also just use the toggle feature as well. Depends on how you want to write this code. You're going to add an action, system, and we're just going to add in a small weight. For your first weight, I recommend 0.2 seconds. We'll then go back to our lightning, set visible, and make it visible again. We're then going to add an action, system, and we're going to add a weight, this time just 0.1 seconds. We're then going to go back to our lightning. You get the idea of this by now. We're going to set it from visible to invisible. We're going to wait one more second. And then finally, once we've waited one more, 0.1 second, sorry, we're then going to set it back to visible. And that's our lightning effect pretty much done. Now, if we test this by full screening this, you can see that every three to five seconds, we get a flash of lightning happen. Now on its own, this effect is good, but it works much better when we have a sound effect added. So let's add our sound effect now. So in order to add our sound effect, we need to go to our object types on the right hand side, right click and add a new object, and we're going down to the audio object. Now once you've got the audio object in, we also need to import a sound effect. So you need to find some sort of sound effect for a thunder sound, or this project will be available to download, so you can always take the track from this file. But I'm just going to go down to sounds, import sounds, import audio. And then I'm just going to select my thunder sound. It's then going to add that sort of sound to my library. I can press import and you'll see it's there. Finally, all we need to do is just add one final action. Audio, play, thunder. Doesn't need to loop. If it's too quiet, we can up the volume. So you can see here, it gives you a little bit of information about how decibels work. So minus 10 decibels is about half as loud. 10 is about twice as loud. I'm going to leave them the same put done, and more importantly we want this to start when the lightning starts at the beginning. It could even go to the very top, it does not matter. But that's our lightning effect, and we can test it out. And there we go. Finally, before we move on to rain, you'll see that we've got this really annoying lightning box that's around, that's stopping us from designing our game. Right click, lock, lock selection. This means now when I'm clicking, I'm now clicking on the background, which I could also lock if I really wanted to. 
And if I ever want to move that layer again, I just right click, lock, and unlock all on layer zero. Give me access to that lightning layer again. I'm gonna lock it, it's now in the way. Next for the rain, we need a raindrop. Now this is one that I've created extremely quickly and your raindrop needs to be very, very small. This is five by five. I think I upscale it to six by six. We're talking very, very small sizes. At the end of the day, it's rain. It doesn't need to be very, very big. We just need a lot of it. And then if we right click on our rain, we can also edit the behaviors and we only need two behaviors. The first one, destroy outside of layout is a good one to have on. It's not necessarily needed, but it'll just stop some lag when you've got lots of rain on the screen. The one that is more important, however, is the bullet behavior, as this is how we're gonna control our rain movement. So once you've got those on, just hit X. Now, once you've selected your raindrop, you can actually edit the speed of your rainfall. So 400 is actually how fast it's falling down. If you increase this number, the rain will fall quicker. So it depends what sort of effect you're going for. I'm gonna leave mine at 400, but you can get an idea and play around with these numbers yourself. Next, we go to the event sheets. I'm gonna add event system every tick. We're gonna go back to system. We're gonna create an object and we're gonna create our raindrop. Now, in terms of our raindrop, the x-axis we're gonna randomize, the y-axis we'll keep at zero. Now, for mine, all I need to do is do random between zero and layout width. And that will cover my game quite nicely because my game's quite small. However, if you're making a really large game, you don't want the rain to be across all of the screen at the same time because this causes a lot of lag. So I'm gonna show you a different fix instead. So we're just gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna put zero for now and just press okay. Instead, we're gonna introduce a global variable. And this global variable is gonna be called rain distance. And I'm gonna set mine to say 400. You can play around with these numbers, however. And what we're going to do is when we create the raindrop, we're going to set the X to random. We're then gonna get the player's current X position I'm gonna minus rain distance. We're then gonna put a comma. We're gonna put the player's X position once more. I'm gonna add rain distance. This means it'll be raining 400 pixels to the left of the player and 400 pixels to the right of the player. If your player is really, really quick, you might need to increase that time. If your rain's falling from really, really high, you might also need to increase that time. You may also want to introduce this to the Y axis if you've got a really, really tall level. So by doing player dot y and then plus say 500 so it falls 500 above the player instead of from the very very top of the ceiling we'll keep this at zero for now and press ok the second thing we need to do for our raindrop is just go to the raindrop itself and we're just going to set angle of motion to where it falls now 90 means it's going to fall straight down however rain doesn't always fall straight down it might fall at a slight angle so i'm going to set mine to 120 so it's moving diagonally so that's technically it that we need to do for our raindrop, but let's add in a couple more features. First feature is we're going to take our raindrop and we're just gonna check on collision with another object. And I'm just gonna use my ground for this. And I'm just gonna use my ground for this. And what I'm checking for is any time the rain hits the ground, I'm actually gonna take my raindrop and I'm going to destroy it. This again is a great way to reduce lag but also it means that we can have sort of shelter areas. So in my first example that I showed you, and I'll show you in just a second, I've got a little roofing area. My play is able to go under and there's no rain. Secondly, we might also want some rain sound effects. So I'm just gonna go to either sound effects or music, import new sounds, import audio, and I'm just gonna find a rain track that I've got, which is just a heavy rain sound. This one's quite a large file, so it's gonna take just a second to encode that file, and then I'm ready to import it. And again, sound effects and music just add so much more impact to your level design. So add an event, system, scroll down, and we want on starts of layout. And then I'm gonna add an action to the audio, play, and I'm gonna pick my heavy rain sound. I'm gonna make sure this one's looping because I want it to always be playing, and hit done. So you can see if we test it now, we've got the rain falling and we can hide under our little platform for safety. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. 
Is it something you're going to put in your game? Let me know. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.